The views and opinions expressed are that of the individuals and are not the reflections of any Grand Masonic body. The goal in this video series is to enlighten the minds of our viewers with Masonic education for the modern Freemason, wherever they might be. Take due notice thereof and govern yourselves accordingly. This is Modern Working Tools, today's tools for the modern Freemason. I am your host, Brother Justice, broadcasting live from Barrington 522 in Barrington, Illinois. So let's get into some of these appendant bodies that we love so much. I know I love them, but don't forget, there's no degree higher than the symbolic sublime degree of the Master Mason. Everything else is additional, supplemental, extra credit. They expound upon some of the deeper meanings within the three degrees. And, you know, yes, uh, they're oftentimes called higher degrees, but that's only in number and not really in meaning or symbolism. So let's get into it. Now, the Scottish Rite is so big that I could do numerous lectures about the Scottish Rite. So today I am going to pick one body within the Scottish Rite to talk about. And it's my favorite. It is the chapter of Rose Craw or the Rose Cross. Now the degrees within the chapter of Rose Craw are known for being among the most intellectually stimulating within the body of Freemasonry. In the ancient Aseptic Scottish Rite, Northern Masonic jurisdiction, the responsibility of a Rose Croix chapter is to confer the 17th and 18th degree only. The lessons within these degrees are rich, exploring themes of philosophy, religion, ethics, and, and more even. Now, these degrees can be fully comprehended over a course of a lifetime if you really dive deep into the history and the symbolism of it. Um, they're frequently considered one of the most rewarding parts of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Few degrees examine the topic of spirituality to the extent these two degrees do. And they definitely have a special place in my heart. I love the 18th degree. You know, making these degrees some of the most significant degrees that our fraternity has to offer for any candidate. Now we will kind of expand a little bit into the degrees and the lessons and the history of the Rose de Croix and its role in the evolution of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. I think we see here, this is a summons to the lodge of St. Alexandre de Ecosse, 1804, France, courtesy of the Grand Lodge of Masons in Massachusetts collection at the Scottish Rite Masonic Museum and Library. The chapter of a Rose Croix started as a separate system of degrees decades before the first Supreme Council was formed. The early beginnings of the fraternity in this chapter were volatile with competing interests and contradictory claims that made the story of the formation of the chapter of the Rose Croix particularly muddied. To provide a summary, despite the world's first Supreme Council being founded in Charleston, South Carolina in 1802, the general organization of the higher degrees of Freemasonry in the United States was in disarray as late as 1813. Many prominent Masons had established competing higher bodies in New York City now, that's a little complex, and maybe that's a, a story for another time, but there was a guy named Joseph Cernot, and he was gaining a lot of popularity, and uh, he, he almost rivaled the Scottish Rite, and his was even more popular in some places than, than the real Scottish Rite. There was a big fight and legal battle, and eventually uh, the Scottish Rite overthrew him, 
Uh, but, but during the time in the early part of the 18th century, there was all types of rites and Freemasonic orders and things like that, people claiming that they had uh, the authority to confer this degree and that degree. It was really the Wild West of Freemasonry at that time. Now, a chapter of Rose Croix was formed in New York City, 1797, by a group of Frenchmen with J.J. Gorgas as secretary. This was the first Rose Croix chapter established in North America. Several other bodies appeared during this time, which called for, in 1813, the Charleston Supreme Council, today known as the Supreme Council of Southern Jurisdiction in Washington, D.C., to investigate the various bodies for legitimacy. These bodies included Antoine Bedard's sublime grand consistory, with other bodies refusing to comply with the Supreme Council's request. Uh, Bedard's group was the only body to be formally recognized. This group and its founding members, notably Samson Simpson, Daniel D. Tampkins, uh, Richard Riker, and later J.J. Gorgas, among other New York Masons, would in the same year become some of the first officers of the Supreme Council of the Northern Masonic Jurisdiction. The recognition of the Sublime Grand Consistory essentially brought forth the creation of the Northern and Southern Jurisdictions. Years of turmoil between the Northern and Southern Jurisdictions would lead to variances in how the degrees of the Scottish Rite are bestowed upon members or conferred including those of the chapter of Rose Croix, and that remains to this day. As you can see here, um, this is a Rose Croix apron, 1830-1840 USA, from the Scottish Rite Masonic Museum and Library. In the Northern Masonic jurisdiction, uh, there is some variation in how Supreme Councils worldwide structure and administer the degrees, but they all agree that the Rose Croix degrees are the spiritual center of Freemasonry and some of the most significant in the whole fraternity. The chapter of the Rose Croix around the world. Today, the degrees included in the chapter depend on the Supreme Councils under which a chapter operates. In France, Romania, Canada, and the Southern jurisdiction of the United States, a chapter consists of degrees 15 to 18. In the Scottish Rite Northern Masonic jurisdiction, the chapter of Rose Croix is comprised of degrees 17 and 18 only. In the United Kingdom, the Rose Croix is the name by which the operating Scottish Rite's bodies are called. And to my knowledge, they can't see in England or in the United Kingdom anything past the 18th degree. Um, their Scottish Rite consists of the Rolls Croix only, exclusively. It, it's very deep and profound and many layers to it, and when you do your research in history, you find out a lot about, about these degrees here. You know, did they come from, you know, Martinism? Is there a Rosicrucian connection? I mean, it's all over the place. And I have seen these degrees at my local valley, and I have seen them change. Uh, little nuances, differences in the ritual, how they're performed, stage setting, uh, some of the ritual delivered. Um, these can often be modified, but the core lessons are always there. They're always powerful, and it is interesting to see how these degrees developed over time. You know, is there a Martinist connection? Is there a Rosicrucian connection? Uh, you know, it's really hard to say, but it seems like some of this sphere of influence sort of bled over in to the Rose Croix. Here is a brief summary of the ethical teachings. 17th degree, night of the East and West. The degree dramatizes a picture of human failure and social and moral behavior. It teaches that loyalty to God should be man's primary allegiance and that we must seek truth in our way of life and learning not to repeat the errors of the past, core values, reverence for God, and service. The 18th degree, Knight of the Rose Croix of Herodom. In this degree, the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth are used to exemplify the universal principles of life. The core lessons is to be virtuous, endeavor to eliminate vice, and practice tolerance and love particularly as it relates to the faith and creed of others. 
The 18th degree teaches that life and its strength come from God, core value, integrity. It must be emphasized that while the setting of these degrees may be Christian, their meaning must be interpreted based on faith of the individual. Their message should resonate with all men. That fellowship may include all men regardless of their nation, race, or creed. The philosophies at the core of the chapter of Rose Croix require careful study to unlock, but there is little doubt that the rewards to be gained through the journey are well worth the effort. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this program. I am your host, Brother Justice, signing off. Until next time, to be one, ask one.